Okay, so today we're going to be talking through the Hitman Shockwave linear decompaction machine. We're going to be touching on such things as coupling and uncoupling from the tractor and setting up for operation in the field. Okay, so this is the Imac Shockwave and we're just going to give you a brief rundown of how the actual machine works. So it's a linear decompaction machine for sports turf services operating at a maximum depth of 10 inches. And the way that the machine works is that you have PTO drive from a tractor through the PTO into a central gearbox, which then evenly distributes drive through the left and right of the shaft. And the way that it works is that it has a V-shaped blade on the shaft and as it rotates and goes into the ground, the ground moves to one side. And then for the timing of the blades on the shaft, as one comes out, the next one beside it goes in. And this will then push the ground back again. Through the continuous motion of the shaft, you get a continuous movement of the ground backwards and forwards, creating fishing cracks in the ground. Also, because it's a continuous line, you can track the water from like a problem area down to the drainage. And that's a brief run through of how the Imac Shockwave works. So, first, we're just going to touch on coupling the shockwave to the tractor. So, first, we're going to start with the lower links, followed by the PTO, and then the top link. So now that we have the lower links and the PTO connected, we're going to lift the legs and lower down the arms so that we can then attach the top link. Okay, so we've lifted the leg on the other side, now we're going to lift the leg on this side, so just by pulling the latch, sliding the leg up, and locking it into place. This just keeps the leg up out of the way during operation and it keeps the leg with the machine. So now we're going to lower the lower links until the top link pin lines up with the top link. Both of the front legs lifted, and someone operating the lower link arms, I'm just going to pull the top link pin. Top link, and we're just going to lower it down until the two holes line up. So with the machine lifted off the ground, we're now going to lift the rear legs. We're then going to go to the rear of the machine and just check that it's level and in the center of the machine on the check chains. And if all that's okay, we're going to take it out to the field and set it up for operation. We're just going to run through setting up the depth of the machine. Uh, so we're going to start off by adjusting the rear roller. That's done by pulling both of the pins on the back. We'll just this on this side. The roller is then supported by two gas rams, which assist you in the weight of the machine. You then push it down, and each of these holes is roughly about a two inch increment. So you put the pin in the required hole for the set depth. You put both pins back in. We now lower the machine down to the ground and adjust the top link so the front of the skids is just slightly off the ground. Okay, so now that we have the rear roller set, we're going to lower the machine down to the ground. Then we're going to come down to the bottom here. We want the skid plate and the turf retainers to be like running level with the ground, with the front of the skid plate just a fraction off the ground. Uh, as you can see just now, it's probably a little bit high, so we're going to wind the top link in and just bring that front down a little bit. So now we've got the rear roller and the skid plate adjusted, we're going to show the machine working. We're just going to lift it up out of the ground, just start the PTO and slowly lower it back into the ground as we move forward. It's very important, nice slow forward speed and four wheel drive. Okay, so now that we've finished operation of the machine, we're going to go through with detaching the shockwave from the tractor and setting it up for storage. So I'm just going to begin by dropping the rear legs and the latch. And that's now locked into place. We're going to repeat that to the side. Then we're going to basically go through with the reverse operation of coupling the machine up. We're going to start with the top link and the PTO and the lower links. 
Okay, so we've someone on the tractor now, we're just going to lower the lower link arms until the weight of the machine is on the rear legs, and that's going to make the top link pin slack so that we can then remove it. Okay, so we've now got the front of the machine lifted up, so we can now lower the front legs as well. So it's just a case of pulling the latch again. That's now locked in, we've already done the other side. So now it's just a case of lifting up your quick release on your arms, lowering the arms down. And now we're ready to draw the tractor away and disconnect the PTO. Okay, so now the last thing that we need to do is just take the PTO off. So it's just a case of sliding the collar back, sliding the PTO off there, and the tractor's now free to draw away. Okay, so we're just going to run through a few small tips, uh, useful things uh, just on the machine. Uh, so one being that you have an operator's manual here, just in case it's ever needed, just for like a reference of uh, information. Uh, the bearings on either end of the shaft uh, and the roller at the uh, back are all fully sealed, so there's no need to grease them. It's a very low maintenance machine. The only grease points that there are on the actual machine are on either end of the UJs on the PTO. 